Okay, so this is uh, Iron 7. Um, let's get straight into the app. Um, Iron 7 is Iron Ruby running a script engine on Windows Phone 7. Um, why, you may ask, and we'll come to that shortly. Um, so basically, when you start it up, you get your list of uh, scripts that's already installed, um, or you get the ability to create a new script, which we'll do. When you create a new script, you can see it's only five lines long. And if you run that script, then what you get is Hello World, which you can't see properly on the screen that way. But if you turn the device, you will be able to see it. Obviously, that's not that exciting. But um, what you probably want to do is take that script and do something to it. So let's zoom in a bit um, and see if we can do some interesting coding. So let's take some basic uh, Ruby. Um, I didn't know Ruby two, well, three days ago. Um, so apologies if there's any uh, odd code going on here, but I'll just create an array. So this array is going to be stra. First one is WP7. Obviously typing isn't as quick on the uh, phone as it is on a proper keyboard, but you can still develop quite quickly. Um, and then we'll take Ruby as our second string. And then finally, we'll add a string of uh, iron 7. Um, the iron Ruby libraries are available on Codeblacks. Um, they do take a bit of massaging to get into the state for the phone. The binaries that are there for the phone don't quite work in your projects. Um, but I will um, be posting something to Codeblacks shortly about how to get it to, to work. So there we go. We created our list of strings. Let's also create a stack panel. Um, all of these things are the standard controls and the standard objects you'd expect. Um, so Ruby syntax is slightly different to the sort of C-sharp syntax you're used to, um, but you'll get the hang of it very quickly once you start coding. Um, so you create a stack panel dot new. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take those strings we created up above, and we are going to loop on them. So str dot each and then the syntax for this is curly braces and pipe so that just means for each s in stra apologies for my names it's just because I'm typing as quickly as I can and then here well before we had the hello world you can see we were going to put in uh, just the S, and then we'll comment out the rest of that line just for speed. Um, and then next change just to get this to work is now we want to add those text blocks to our stack panel. So that is stack panel is SP dot children. You can see that all the property names that you might expect, for example, on this AI, for um, for the stack panel to have capital C for its property, it's just a lowercase to uh, match the conventions. And similarly, the children is a list, but it has a dot add with a lowercase a. Um, you'll also see where they put capital letters in the camel caps type style. You put an underscore, as you can see, in, in the font size there. So this is the text block. Um, the keyboard isn't ideal to, to type on, and the editor I'm using is quite slow as well at the moment, but that's all going to come and change in future versions. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we close our curly braces. Now the last star line of this is actually where we add the content to the host. Currently we're adding text box. That obviously doesn't exist anymore. So we select that, and that's going to be our stack panel. So if I take you through that code, hopefully you could see come out of it a second. Hopefully you can see in that code we create an array of strings, we then create the stack panel, we then do a for each on the, on the list of strings. For each one we create a text block and we uh, set the text to the current string and we set its font size just for fun um, and then we add that control to the stack panel and then finally after the loop's finished we add the, to the host. So if we run that Hopefully I didn't miss anything. You can then see your list. Um, that's live code. Um, you can go back and edit that code if you want to. And if there was something, you know, um, if you really wanted to say Iron Ruby, then you could do it. If you wanted to change the the size, you could do it. Um, so that's quite simple, straightforward. 
um, and you can build up code quite quickly. Some of the other samples that we ship with, obviously, you know, that's not got huge amounts of interest to you, um, but you can build these things up into quite complicated structures. So, for example, I took a fractal thing from Code Project, um, licenses in there, um, and you can see it's not that many lines of code. Um, most of it's building up the color array, and there's a little bit about how to add a line, which again is a line.new, um, and you add it to a canvas. And then there's a recursive method called draw binary tree, and this is called in a timer loop. Timer loop. There's a bit of problem with syntax highlighting there. Um, so it's 81 lines in total, um, most of which is, is still kind of stuff. And it does this as a uh, timer loop, so once a second, it adds another hoop loop to the tree. So if we go back, um, other examples that this ships with, um, I took finger paint, which is um, on uh, I think it's on silverlight.net as a sample. Um, it's a great sample to look at. It's very simple in C sharp as well, um, but it ports very neatly. Again, it's not very large in terms of total number of lines. It's perhaps 70 or 80 lines again. Um, you can see how we respond to mouse points there. Oh, it's over at 90 lines. Um, and when we run it, if I hit run, then um, you get a choice of colors at the top and you can do things with those colors so you can then choose to draw. Um, it's not as fast as writing C sharp code, it's not, it doesn't execute as fast, so it doesn't give you a smoother a compiled feel, um, but obviously you can optimize that if you want to, and it is really for scripts, not for everything else. Um, let's go back and try some of the other samples just to show you the things you can do. Um, obviously with the emulator I can't show you the things like we have actually got GPS sensor in there, we have got accelerometer, and I have integrated the map, the Bing map control, so you can control that. Um, and you can add a, uh, a current position to the map if you want to. Um, and you can add overlays like polygons, so there's the map control running smoothly inside. Um, so you can do quite sophisticated things. You can do the math that I showed you. You can do the canvas drawing. Um, again, this is another sample taken, ported across from C Sharp. Actually, no, that was ported from Iron Ruby for WPF. And you can see it running there as a timer. Um, finally, uh, let me see if there's any other samples that I want to show you. Network. Um, so there are a few network samples that we can do. Um, one of them here is Flickr. Um, so the Flickr code is, uh, again, quite simple. Um, parsing the responses isn't that straightforward, unfortunately. Um, so I actually use a horrible regex here to pull out the, the, the thing. I don't have a, a built-in uh, JSON library at the moment to do it, and it's quite hard to add gems to this environment at the moment. Um, so uh, let's just show you what happens when you run it. Um, so if you do a Flickr search for Iron Ruby, it goes off. You can see the network activity at the top, and then it loads up the images, and you get a chance to, you know, look through the Rails conference. Okay, I hope that you get that gives you a good idea of what you can do with this app. Um, it is a full environment in there. You get control over what you type, you get control over what you write, you get control over what you run. Um, I hope you enjoy playing with it.